my name is uh, Mwesh Mukanga. I'm coming from uh, Zambia Agricultural Research Institute. It's a government department under the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock. I'm the aide of plant protection uh, and quarantine division in the institute. Yes, food safety is, is of a concern. And um, uh, as a department ourselves, it has just dawned upon us uh, after some time that in as much as we can go ahead and produce, develop technologies and so on, are we really addressing what the farmer out there wants? And how best can we assist them to access uh, uh, markets if they were to produce crops like groundnuts or even maize? So as plant protection, of course, our mandate is to stop every disease or pest that would come our way. But uh, food safety has become a, an issue now in the sense that we are trying to resolve one long-standing issue pertaining to uh, one part of Zambia, which used to export a lot of groundnuts to Europe. And because the EU changed their regulations, and they were it was stopped. And these people have been affected. And you know when people lose income, it affects every other aspect of their lives. And this is the eastern part of Zambia, and fortunate, of course, there's a, a project that is currently running under the Feed the Future uh, uh, program of the USID. And through that, we are working with two CGIS centers. Uh, one of them is IITA, looking at the biological control aspect. And uh, ICRISAT, looking at the other non-biological control uh, measures. The whole purpose is to ensure that we can mitigate, come up with measures that can control aflatoxin and enable our dear farmers in the eastern part of Zambia, which is the major producer of groundnuts, so they can start to access uh, uh, international market. This has started to work out. Uh, just last year, we, had an, we were briefed by a cooperative uh, organization, the, the Farmers Cooperative Unit, and they have started to at least do something about it in terms of really ensuring that the groundnuts that are being exported to uh, markets such as South Africa are meeting the requirements in terms of aflatoxin uh, limits. So, indeed, food safety is also a, a challenge and something that is of greater concern, not only in terms of trying to access those markets, but also what do our farmers consume because there's a tendency uh, about, you know, with farmers, they tend to separate the good from the bad, and they try to keep the bad for themselves, and try to export the good. So really, that becomes an issue. So there's need for sensitization, raising awareness that the bad you are keeping, actually, when you want, you want to sell the good, it means that you yourselves and your families will be affected. And that is the biggest problem that is there. So raising awareness about aflatoxin, is one issue. Um, informing policy, because you see the aflatoxin is not something that you are going to see. It's something that is inside. Sometimes the symptoms will not be there. You see? So the policy makers, uh, every other stakeholders, every player in, the, in, the, in the, the value chain has to be informed, sensitized, and made aware about uh, aflatoxin. So stakeholder sensitization is very, very important. More importantly, and I think Abigail has already alluded to, is the need for laboratories that can actually be able to taste for aflatoxin. And through this project that we are working with the IIT and Equisite, we have managed to establish one laboratory, and through the USID Southern uh, Trade Hub, there's also another laboratory that was set up, and there has been this interest that we need to have at least a reference laboratory so that we have confirmatory uh, uh, tests done so that our, our, our farmers and also the companies that are involved in processing, say, groundnuts uh, into peanut butter are able to have their peanut butter meet the international requirements. You done? No, no. Yeah, then there is this other issue pertaining to uh, perishables, which Daria alluded to. 
And this also has come in because uh, we have been noticing when you go out in these larger markets, you, you buy uh, uh, cabbage or whatever, and then you find that these, some of these are just plucked out of, from the field with a lot of uh, uh, pesticide spread upon them. And it has become a major concern. Uh, we are now thinking as from my institute that there's need to look into this pesticide usage on the perishables, vegetables and fruits. So that some of the cases that tend to pass on to the hospitals and talking about certain diseases may be as a result of people consuming things that were probably just sprayed three, four hours ago and these chemicals are still on the, uh, on the produce. So there's need to do research that would also again start to feed policies so that people are able to be told, well, if you are spraying pesticide, please don't go out and pluck the, 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 the cabbage or, or Chinese cabbage and so on and start selling just immediately after spraying. I think sensitization again becomes very, very key on the need for uh, safety when it comes to vegetables and uh, fruits. So in terms of partnership, I believe that of course the, the line ministries in government are key to work with and uh, the academia and of course the NGOs and also the local communities, the farmers, and the companies that are involved in, say, processing peanut butter for export or packaging just raw groundnuts for export. Those are also very, very important. They need to come on board. In whatever research agenda we need to come up, we need to bring those people on board and see what their needs are. I think I am there for now. Thank you. Thanks, Mercy. You talked a lot about sensitization and awareness raising and extension type things. I didn't hear, what's the science? Is the science already known? It's just a matter of getting it out? Or is there really some new science and some new research and new evidence that you need in Zambia? Yeah, there's, there, there's, there's, there, we are in the IITA ICRISAT arrangement, the project that is there, we are testing Aflacef. And uh, uh, we are trying to get the strains that could displace the ones that cause aflatoxin. So the science is <laughs> ongoing, it's, it's there, it just needs to be supported in terms of uh, maybe equipment or in terms of expanding because we are trying to scale up. So really the science is there and the technologies are being adapted for, uh, for, 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 for use by our farmers. And I would mention that this year we have entered year two in terms of trying to test for that particular biological control agent. Equally, the other techniques that have been developed by ICRISAT are also being tested on farm. So in terms of the science, I think we are getting there. But it is just the very sensitization because uh, you can have the science, but it can end up not being used. So farmers have to be told, well, this is the product that can actually help and solve your problem. The stakeholders, the government also need to be made aware about the very aflatoxin. Because you can, you can talk about aflatoxin, but if they are not aware, enforcement of regulations becomes, it cannot, you cannot achieve the, the desired result. OK. And if, do you want to add something on if that? If I can make a quick. Uh, Interjection there. I think there is also very much a science around sensitization and awareness and behavior change. What we see, for example, in America or Europe, many people are aware that they should not eat too many sugars and fats and all the rest of it. So it, it's, it, you sometimes need to go beyond that awareness. And the same is true with many of these, as, as Moshi said, invisible product and food. If a farmer is told 80% of your crop contains an invisible product which may hurt you decades later, it's not immediately obvious that that awareness is going to be enough to change their behavior change. So there is very much a science around behavior change. 